Thank you for tuning in this episode of Channel Surfing. In today's episode, we're going to talk about ceramic coating. How long does it actually last? And I got two boats right behind me over here. Got obviously, Channel Surfing, we were ceramic coated how a little over, over two years ago. And we have new neighbors. This is actually Kevin's boat who runs uh, Premier Custom Ceramic Coating. And he, obviously his boat's been ceramic coated as well. Uh, a little over two years ago we had Channel Surfing ceramic coated. And the Red R29 you're going to see later in this video uh, was actually ceramic coated just over four years ago. Now Rich, who owns that boat, it's a friend of ours, and uh, <clears throat> he'll tell you straight up, he doesn't have time to clean his boat. He just doesn't want to spend his time doing that. He, he trailers the boat, he's driving a, a, a good distance with it to get up to the Puget Sound to go uh, to go boating that's what's important to him so he paid ceramic coating because he wanted the boat to look good and as you'll see it actually has held up really well um, over the four years um, <clears throat> and uh, Kevin will talk later in the video about what it takes to reapply ceramic coating once the boat's been done the first time now channel serving we do the exact opposite um, we do the aftercare on the boat pretty regularly I do the whole twice a year I do the white about annually now that I'm actually at Dagmar's full time so I'm not on a covered slip anymore. I'm going to have to do the white twice a year as well. But it doesn't take me a whole lot of time to do it. A couple hours here or there. I don't have to do the whole boat at once. Um, although I do need dry weather to do it. Um, and right now I'm filming this in January in the Pacific Northwest. And there's a cold front coming in. So it's absolutely miserable outside. But anyway, without any further ado. Um, oh, um, cost of ceramic coating, right? So um, it's unique. I don't say to every boat, um, Kevin um, provides quotes and stuff for it, but it's not a one-size-fits-all, right? Um, new boats versus used boats, how much oxidation is on the boat, uh, the condition of the boat really matters. Um, what I did for justifying the cost of it was I looked at the annual cost of paying somebody to professionally detail my boat, which usually is um, wash the boat and then wax the boat from one end to the other. And the ceramic coating was about three times that cost. So like, okay, three years worth of professionally detailing to get wax put on the boat, as opposed to I pay ceramic coating once, and if I can get, you know, if Rich has got four years, I'll probably get five or six out of it, I would think, at least, uh, with me doing the aftercare and stuff on it. But, uh, but still, I mean, they say to expect three to five years. It also depends on the region you're in, right, uh, how much sun you get. We're in the Pacific Northwest, so we get a lot of, a lot of gray, a lot of rain, but then we have really nice summers, um, as opposed to if you were in, um, you know, say the, the Florida area where you're just baked in the sun. Um, that's going to play a big part on it, too you know as well and of course you know as you're boating how many you know how much water and stuff comes over the boat before my southeast alaska trip i did the whole boat top to bottom with the aftercare and ceramic coating because i knew i was going to see a lot of salt water for that trip you know so you know the, the environment plays a big big role in it too uh rich with the arc 29 you'll see in this video uh, in a minute um he keeps his boat in a garage um when it's at home um but he does spend a lot of time on the on the highway being trailered and he uses his boat a lot you know, he's got over 2,000 hours in f over four years on this set of ceramic coating so without any further ado let's go and uh, talk to kevin down at his shop at premier custom ceramic coating Premier Custom Ceramic Coating and uh, working on a Red R29, gorgeous boat. <clears throat> We're going to check out how, uh, how the ceramic coating is actually done down here at Kevin's shop. And he's got an insulated heater and it's nice and toasty in here too. It's November. We're, or actually, what's it? January. We're filming this. I was like, November? <laughs> Where are you at? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, tell us, Kevin, what are we doing with the boat? So this one here, um, we're going to take care of the fender rash and uh, Polish this boat up and and ceramic coat it. This oh, boat yeah. was done about four and a half years ago or so, and so this is going to be a, a total redo. Oh, um, interesting. So let's, ta let's say two things. So the fender rash and the four and a half years. So let's look at the fender rash real quick. So, <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, what happens when we don't put our fender protection film on. So 
When we did this boat originally, we weren't doing the fender protection film. That's something that we developed and, and uh, started to do later on when we had problems like this happening on boats. And we just hate our nice looking boats to end up looking like this after. And this can actually happen within six months on a, on a new boat if it's in a slip that's windy or something like that. So this will be all sanded, buffed and polished and you'll no longer see this. And then we're going to be putting a, a clear film over this so that it won't happen again. Oh, nice. This, and the back has already been buffed and polished, but it looked like this when we started right here and right here. Mostly down in here where the where the fenders hit. Yeah, just erased it. Yep. Yep. So that's interesting because uh, this boat usually doesn't sit at a dock. Um, I know they use the boat a lot, but it's on a trailer a lot of the time also. Right, right. But of course when they're using it and they're and they're at moorage that's that's generally when it happens more than your home slip because you're out in the wind and right. and then uh, you're not always in a area that doesn't have a no wake zone. And if you just anchor a lot, you don't have to worry about it. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, or if you're always on the go like us. Right. So you said this boat was done four and a half years ago. Know channel surfing, we don't have the, the we didn't get the fender protection on ours. Um, I have a little bit of rash, but it's not not that bad. Um, and now I'm over at Dagmar's, um, it'll slow the rate down of getting even more. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, we've got two years on our ceramic coating, um, and it looks fantastic. And, of course, I do the aftercare. Um, I do the, the, the color more often than I do the, the white, because the white takes a lot more time to do. So the white's probably getting it once a year, and the hull's getting it at least twice a year Right. Um, on that. Being at Dagmar's, I'll probably have to just suck it up and do the white more often because now I'm exposed to the sun, right. so it's, it's more important. Before I was in a covered slip, so I wasn't as worried about it because the rain and the sun were mm -hmm. off of it. Right. But this boat's four and a half years, so what does it take to redo ceramic coating? So this is, this is basically, we're just going to polish this boat, take care of any little nicks or, or scratches that might be on it. Uh, they're really careful with this boat, so he doesn't have a lot of scratches on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, just yesterday, I went down to Kirkland in a, in a brand new 31, the very first time docking the boat, he scratched it up. So I had to go down there and fix that for him and scratch it up. And, I have uh, a couple of scratches from docking town, so we're doing a gel coat repair video right. with Brian over that. So, so it's, <laughs> I mean, it happens, it's boating. Yeah, know. it's going to happen. It's matter of my own boat, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, so um, this one doesn't have really a lot to, of that, but so we're just going to basically polish this boat. We're going to clean up uh, uh, the non-skid and redo the non-skid. You can see on the back of this, uh, uh, if you want to pop up the stairs here and just kind of look at how that kind of just gets dirty and dingy, and then we totally clean all of that and all of the rust around these areas and then um, recoat all of that. So when we have this boat, it'll look like brand new again. So, so um, compared to a new boat versus that you know, didn't have ceramic coating as opposed to one that had it that you're redoing four or five years later, is it less expensive, the same amount of money? Is it, does the labor comparable? To this is, it? to redo this boat, it's a way less work. So it's less money. So, all right, so once it was ceramic coated the first time, if you have it redone in say four or five years, it's, it's good, it won't be as expensive. It's correct. And what is it that, what, that you save? What's the labor that you save in that? Uh, probably about 30%. Okay. And that's like the buffing on it. Yep, the buffing and stuff. We have a, a cut wire coming in in a couple of weeks that will be a good uh, used boat that, that uh, has not been ceramic coated before. And then you'll see it's going to require a lot more work. Yeah. Um, we'll have to buff that boat. Uh, if this boat had not been done before, we would be buffing this whole boat before polishing. So that's a whole extra step. Right to get the, any kind of oxidation or anything like that off of it. Right. And, uh, any, any kind of scratches or stains as well. Mm -hmm. 
Um, if it's not coated, it can stain real easy and things like that, especially on the swim step and on the non skid that doesn't have the closed cell. Right. Um, to do the initial ceramic coating, what actually are the steps involved that you do? So the initial on a new boat, like the one that was over there we just finished, we polished that whole entire boat before we ceramic coat it. So the first thing that comes in is the guys clean it with alcohol. And unless it's been sitting out for a while, we'll wash the boat, but it's we have to wash the whole boat first, and then from there they start to polish. And then they'll polish the entire surface, then they'll ceramic coat that. We'll polish the, uh, the stainless or go over it with a stainless uh, cleaner that we have, and then we'll do that with the uh, hydro serum mm -hmm. and coat the stainless. Same with the windows, if they have any any water spots or anything like that on there, we polish that mm -hmm. and get rid of all of the water spots, and then we coat that as well. So, so clean the boat, alcohol all over the boat to get all debris and dirt and all that off it. Buff the boat, get the oxidation out then polish the boat, then it's ready for ceramic coating. Right. right. And then you got the stainless steel bars to do in the glass, because the, the ceramic coating doesn't, doesn't stick as well to the stainless bars. Those have to be done more often. Right. And we, you can do that yourself. And it's um, not porous enough to hold it. It's yeah. the, the reason that it doesn't last as long. Yeah, we use the hydrogen that's uh, the aftercare stuff for the windows. It's, it's way better than Rain-X. Uh, it does take two applications to put on, but it's wipe on, wipe off. It's easy to do. Yeah, and then that's that's what Rich really likes about the, the aftercare. He's not used any aftercare on this at all uh, within that time because that's, he says I'm lazy. That's he actually says, I have not washed this boat in two years, other than rain and fresh water rinse. So let's take a walk around because that's some that's some good information. We know the owners of this boat, um, and uh, he uses it a lot. He's got a lot of hours and stuff on it. But to not wash the boat, um, it's on a trailer running up down the highway um, when he takes it uh, yep. down to the waterway. So um, that's pretty impressive to get four and a half years on it uh, <clears throat> and doing nothing but just wash. I'm assuming he rinses it. Yes, um, he rinses it down. Yeah, get the salt water and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And we can take a uh, walk around the back or the front, whichever way you want to go. So this has all been up and all white from here up. It's not been clean from there down, but you can see. Oh yeah, but it's in, in uh, pretty decent sh shape for that long ago. Yeah, what year is this, this is boat? I think it's a 19, isn't it? Uh, it might be around there, yeah. 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 Gorgeous boat. Yeah, they brought this all the way from Oregon for us to do. So that's actually really good for free for me because I got, like I said, two years on my boat and I do the aftercare on it. Um, so if Rich hasn't done it in four and a half years, I'll probably get more than four and a half years out of mine. But I keep it up. The aftercare is like a uh, sacrificial coat. So mm -hmm. the more often you do it, the, the less likely your ceramic is going to wear yeah. off. So. Yeah. So, so funny story, you guys will see this in an upcoming video. We're working on a um, Jelco repair. Um, I ran channel surfing into the fuel dock and put some minor scratches on it. So I'm working with Brian over at Peter Sound Composites. 90% um, of the nicks and dings on a hull are not punch throughs. They're small gouges and stuff from docking accidents. Um, to get uh, some Jelco repair. So he's doing some color matching and he mm. actually took gel coat on just oh, and nice. just taped it to the hull. Right, she's trying to match the color to make sure that it's the same color. Um, so it's just sticking on the side. We'll show you the clips of that. Um, and then when he's done, he just wipes it off because it doesn't stick because the ceramic coating's there. We have a uh, controlled environment here, so yeah. it's nice to have it warm and dry. Yeah, you don't freeze work. your workers. Well, as we right. said, yeah, that's actually a good point. So when we had channel surfing done, um, we didn't have a way to get channel surfing here because I don't have a trailer. Right. Right. So we did it over at Everett in their covered area. So the boat it was out outside under cover because you need the cover to keep the rain from hitting it. If it's summertime, you get your, your, your bedding, well, your odds are better. We get less rain in the summertime, but we had it channeled, we had it um, coated in October, which in the Pacific Northwest, um, you know, your high probability of chance of rain. But uh, Kevin, you've got a trailer now. 
right. that you can haul. Why don't you talk briefly about that? So yeah, we had a lot of people that had moored boats and wanted to get their boats done just like you. And it's harder and harder to get into every covered moorage. And right now they don't even have it because they're building out that covered space with uh, another um, place that wanted inside mm -hmm. uh, uh, building. So half of that space will be gone. Yeah, so they're, they're reducing the amount of coverage. So yeah. yeah, so the, the issues that you have with working outside, but like some of these people are saying that we'll come to you and ceramic coat your boat in the water. You can't do this kind of work in the water that we do here. The polishing that we do, pushing on the boat, and the boat moving away from you, and cords dripping in the water, and things like that is impossible to do a good job. It's mm -hmm. just plain. Well, you, you could get so the white above in the water, but right. you couldn't get the hull itself. Exactly. Yeah. So, so we decided to um, to buy a transport trailer, and so we can transport up to the twenty nine foot boat on our transport trailer right. that we bought. It. So that's nice to have. So if you have a boat, and you don't have a trailer. Kevin's got a trailer that he can use to get your boat out of the water and get it over here, right. which opens up the scheduling quite a bit. Because for us, I mean, um, the channel swimming, I was limited to the schedule that Everett had for the haul out and their cover storage. Right. You know? right. So, yeah, we'll take a look at the trailer real quick. If you can. Right here. Oh, yeah. So, this is a hydraulic trailer. And actually, if the boat was sitting on the hard, I could take the, the chain off of the back and drive under it and lift it with this trailer. Oh, interesting. So the, the rear wheels go up and down. There's no axles in between to get in the way. And then the front neck goes up and down to raise and lower the front while it's hooked up to the truck. So it, it was expensive. But we've done several boats. I'm about to go pick up a 26 cut water on on that mm -hmm. on this trailer because it also it's a moored boat. And the nice part about this boat is you can do the ones with the keels as well because you don't have the the axles to. Oh yeah, get so you can do inboards, you can do outboards, right? Yeah. So it makes it really handy for that. Yeah, that would have been really nice. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's been. Uh, a big deal. We've had probably 24 boats on this trailer since we bought it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, it's nice having the two covered areas out here too at your shop. Yeah, <clears throat> it works really well. This one is a little bit taller, so we put the bigger boats in here. Uh, the 29s and 31s are taller, so they'll go in this one, and then anything smaller will go in that one. So we we try and work our schedule back and forth. Cool. I always like to have a boat here for the guys to work on, so when they get one, they could just work on another. Yeah. And stuff. This uh, uh, 29 we had here a couple months ago, a uh, fellow brought from, uh, he brought it all the way from Eau Claire, Wisconsin for us to do. Oh, wow. So, brought it on a, a fifth wheel boat trailer. Mm hmm. And there's a lot of work that goes in the ceramic coating. I had a lot of people that asked me how come I didn't do my own ceramic coating since I try and do everything I can on my own boat. And Jelco repair I'm not good at. I'm trying to get good at it. So we're working on that Jelco repair video. But uh, ceramic coating is just, in, I just didn't have the time. It's really labor intensive. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, it was, what, channel serving was four and a half days that you guys worked on it. And that was with a couple of guys at yeah. the same time, right? I just, for me doing it myself, you know, first off, you gotta have the know-how, understand how to do it, mm -hmm. right? You gotta have the right, I gotta get the ceramic coating from you to do that, so there's the product involved with it. And I just, right. I just didn't have two weeks to sit there and buff and polish the boat. Well, and we developed a process and we have the product. Um, mm -hmm. I have the distributorship for the products that we use and it's really unlike anything else on the market. Mm -hmm. So it was developed by a applicator in Florida that tried all the major brands and, and it either was too hard to work with or uh, didn't last long enough. So he, he had his own developed and it's mm -hmm. been working out really well for us. So. 
And what's the difference between the ceramic coating that you apply here and then the aftercare that the customers get to, to keep and maintain it? So the aftercare product is a waterborne product. And so anything that's waterborne where you're just going to spritz it on and, and uh, wipe it down like that is less um, of the ceramic in it because it really takes a solvent to do a good job with ceramic. Okay. So um, the aftercare has a really good uh, hydrophobic rejuvenation factor mm -hmm. to it and then also a light ceramic okay so that's the difference it'll last on its own it'll last about six months or however long wax will last yeah. Uh, yeah. and if you haven't checked out our aftercare video how to apply it um click right up here it's really easy you spritz it on and you wipe it off i use two different color cloths so i know which one i'm wiping off which one i'm putting on and literally i can do my whole boat in like a couple of hours and i don't break a sweat at it very unlike wax um, it's much easier to work with. So yeah, so that's kind of what we're we're doing here today. I thought I'd have William do a little sanding on that spot and buffing if you guys have time to film yep. that. Absolutely, yeah. Let's and go ahead and get started. And then, uh, yeah, each guy works on uh, on a, their own section of the boat. So we have three guys uh, on our team. Uh, D and generally works. Yeah, top. On the top. He's hiding up there somewhere. Yeah, he's right there. I well, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> so he typically works on the top and works his way down. Um, the other guys start on each side and do that. And then they all meet towards the back and finish up. And, and the swim step is the last thing to get finished. And so so have, William's going to sand this. So we, sand. he's going to work on sanding this and, and buffing this. And we'll see how this turns out here in just a few minutes. too much with the pad is the, the products that you're taking off fall up on that and then it'll cause curly cues and so we always have to keep a fresh pad. Doing it. Wow, there you go. Not to the average yeah. person, that's pretty shiny. some heavier sandpaper about 600 to get that down a little bit and then we'll do the same process we did here with this little area and this will be gone so and that's what we do with somebody scuffs a, a, like we did with your boat that little yeah. scuff we'll wet sand that a little bit to get it cool. back down and that's right i almost forgot about that so when when kevin did uh you're fine. Kevin Ceramic Code of Channel Surfing, I had a, uh, a piece of, uh, uh, I hit a, a dock over at Coopville. So it was a, a white rub mark in there. It's probably about this long on the back of the boat, and he erased it. <clears throat> so a lot of times when we do a used boat, uh, 
Unless it's excessive, we don't usually charge extra for those things. And people ask me, can you fix our scratches or whatever? And I said, well, we can make them look better, but I, I never say I can totally get rid of them because you never know how deep they totally are or whatever. Mm -hmm. But most of the time when people come back, they're, they're like all gone. You know, so. Yeah, if it's, if it's like minor scratches on the surface and you can buff out and polish out the scratches, you know, um, if it goes deeper in there, then you have to do gel coat repair and actually add gel coat and then you buff and polish and see. Right. We did, we did do that on the last boat that came in right below the molding and had a great big gash in it, about six inches long. So I yeah. did repair that. Mm -hmm. We can do some gel coat repair. Uh, if it's major, I'll have. Brian, come up and do it. Brian's really good at gel coat repair. I, um, I can't wait for that video um, to come out that he and I yeah. worked on. Was, um, yeah. The one, uh, I've got three dings on my boat. Uh, one of them actually goes all the way down to fiberglass and stuff, but uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's gonna be good when it's done. Yeah, it's amazing what you can do with it. Well, just seeing how to work with gel coat too, because it's not normal paint. No, no, and that's why you see us buffing hard like this, mm -hmm. because this is pretty thick. Yeah. and it's it's pretty durable. The compounds that we use and the work that we do, we use a slow buffer and and use push on it and make those products work. But that's how we take care of the fender <laughs> rash. Thank you. Very well. Good job. Thanks for coming by. Then we'll put that clear film on there as well. And, After and you get it off then. From happening. Yeah. So the, the clear film is self-healing, so if it does scuff a little bit, you won't see it like you did here mm -hmm. because it's a clear film mm -hmm. and it doesn't turn white when it, it scuffs, mm -hmm. but in the sunlight, it'll heal itself. Mm -hmm. And with that, I assume it eventually it'll get scratched over time. You just peel it off and put new, yep. new on I've it. had people that hit the dock mm -hmm. and it's torn it up but not actually scratch the gel coat, right? And we just tear it Do off. those people ask you to do their whole boat in that <laughs> Yes, and, and actually there are companies that are- Do you are, make any bubble wrap? There are, <laughs> there are companies that are doing that and I, and I looked into it, but it's, it's pretty spendy. And then what if a, a little area gets messed up and you have to do the whole side because you can't really overlap it. Right. And it's hard to get a perfect patch put in and that's the issue that you have with these people that want to do the, these wraps on their boats and stuff is uh, you know you're gonna get a scuff and then you're gonna have a patch in it. And Actually that's a good that's a, a good topic we haven't talked about vinyl wraps at all which um, how's a vinyl wrap differ from ceramic coating? So it's it's actually vinyl that they're putting on there just like the stripes or or things like that that they put on motorhomes and mm -hmm. stuff it's just it's vinyl and if you want your vinyl coat to last you better ceramic coat it because it's going to deteriorate just like stripes do right mm -hmm. after time the, the vinyl is deteriorated yeah. yes i've seen photographs of uh, i know one r27 that had the vinyl wrap and i mean the cool thing with with a vinyl wrap um is uh, you can change the color of the boat without repainting it. Right, right. Um, you know, if you want a uh, if you want a unique color, if you want a picture image or something like that, yeah. they can do some stuff there. But you're not going to get the shine and the reflection no. and stuff from it. Um, and I don't, I don't know how well vinyl repels water. I would think that it wouldn't repel as much as a ceramic coat. I come back. I mean, literally cleaning my boat is I just rinse and I walk away. Um, I don't have to use salt spray in the boat. I don't have to scrub on the boat. But the stuff just doesn't stick to it. Um, right, and it will to the ceramic unless you have it, I mean to the, the vinyl, unless you have it ceramic coated. Yeah. So, that's just cool. Well, cool. All right. Thank, All right. You, thank you for the update, Kevin. It's nice to actually come out here and see your shop and stuff. We didn't yeah, get to, thanks. We did that last time. Thanks, yeah. So. We just had the ceiling sprayed so that, and now we're going to have the, the yeah. next building done. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Low insulation. For the off season, keep a little warmer in here. Yeah, warmer, and then it keeps the ceiling from sweating right. as well. So, which is, you know, in the winter time here, have those issues. Yeah.
go check out uh, how Rich's boat's doing. It's almost done. So if you'd like to, uh, like to meet Kevin and talk to him, he'll actually be down at the Seattle Boat Show coming up uh, February 2nd through the 10th, um, 2024. So uh, if you're at the Boat Show, be sure you stop by and find him. They'll be, they'll be there. Yep, we'll have a booth there, and we'll also have two boats done in the Ranger Tug display, and, and at least one or maybe two or three of the cut waters will be done. And we'll have Fender film on all of those as well, so people can come by and see what that looks like and uh, see if they can find it on the boat. That's always really good because you can always tell the ceramic coating from the non-ceramic coated on a brand new boat at the boat show. Yeah. yeah. Check out the Ranger Tug booth to, to actually see what it looks like done. Yeah, it's an amazing oh. difference. So yeah, it'll be fun. We'll, we'll have the 25 and the 27 done for Ranger Tug. Good. So uh, almost done with the, the Red Arc 29. Yep. So uh, a little over four years of ceramic coating on it. Uh, how long did it take you to how many days have you spent redoing this year? Yeah. Just now. We spent three days actually. We were down a guy on uh, Friday and Monday, otherwise we would have had it done in about two days. So a lot less work going in, a lot less work redoing again. A lot of the work that we did was to clean up like the rust rings and the stainless and things like that, all the windows. So that stuff takes the same amount of time whether it's ceramic coated or not. Right. And then uh, we did a quick polish on everything else, and then of course um, the uh, fender rash and a few scuffs it took some time. Yeah, she looks really shiny. So it's, um, so I know the owner of this boat, Rich, and uh, he doesn't like cleaning 
at all. He, he likes boating, which is why he did the ceramic coating. And he swears by uh, this. I talked to him actually on the phone, and and uh, for the four years he's had had the ceramic coat done, all he's done is rinse the boat. He hasn't done any aftercare to it. Um, he just rinses the salt water stuff off. He trailers the boat a lot, so it's run down the highway. Um, so he says he gets a lot of slime off the road. Um, he does have a garage he puts it in. Yeah. Um, so it's so when it's at home, it's stored out of the out of the water, out of the sunshine and stuff. But uh, but he also puts a lot of hours on his boat too. He, he cruises quite a bit. Two thousand hours. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, I do all the aftercare. I do the gray hole. I'm channel surfing uh, at least twice a year, usually before season, after season. I usually go over it twice just because it's easy to do. Um, and then I go over the white at least once a year. Um, now that I'm at Dagmar's out of the water all the time, I used to have a covered slip. Now I'm not covered anymore. I'll have to do it at least twice a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, so I'm hoping I can beat Rich's record in four years, <laughs> five or six or seven. <laughs> Well, the aftercare really acts like a sacrificial coat. So as long as you keep putting that on, you're not going to wear off your ceramic. So that's the nice part about it. And the ceramic goes deep into that gel coat. You know, gel coat is really porous, so it gets down in there. Like Rich said, it, you know, it's not as hydrophobic as it was, but that doesn't mean that the ceramic is gone. That means the hydrophobic portions of the ceramic is right. gone. So that's the reason there wasn't any oxidation on that boat at all. Yeah, red's a really hard color um, to keep from oxidizing, so that happened over four years on it. It looks really good. Yeah, so that, that was good. And yeah, Rich, uh, he does like to just rinse his boat off and not have to scrub and wash and stuff like that. Yeah, one of the problems he mentioned to me was the pH of the water he usually has to rinse it. You know, so he's he's he, he's hesitant to even do that because it'll leave water spots. But the water spots are outside the ceramic coat, not actually into it. Right. You know, but uh, right. But he has some new soap that I'm going to give him some and have him try it. That has a little bit of uh, not a wax, but a, that type of a, a product in it so that it helps shed that water so the water spots will be big beads of water yeah. they'll be smaller and, and mm. dry up faster and easier so he's going to give that a try yeah. but the one thing rich does like is his boat to look shiny yeah he does like that <laughs> yeah, he still gets compliments he said everywhere he goes yeah Back then, when we did channel surfing, I was really skeptical because I had my, my car done by the dealer years ago, and they charged me a fortune for that, and I swore I never saw a benefit from that. I was like, I'd never use ceramic coating again. But I can tell you, after having uh, channel surfing ceramic coated, um, it's a world difference. I spend a lot less time cleaning, and the time that I do spend cleaning it, it's easier. It's wipe on, wipe off. Um, yeah, super easy to work with um, instead of the buffing and polishing and stuff that the wax gives you. That's one of the major benefits of the ceramic coating is uh, everybody that I talk to says it takes them 70% less time at the dock to clean their boat. Yeah. I, and I would agree with that number. Me personally on channel surfing, I would absolutely agree with that. Yeah, so just rinse it down and, and enjoy your boating. <laughs> it's actually funny, you guys will see this in an upcoming video on gel coat repair. I'm working with uh, Brian at Puget Sound Composites, and uh, he was color matching the paint on my boat. So he's like sticking gel coat onto the outside of the boat, not part of the gel coat repair, um, to match it. And we just pulled it off and wiped it off. When the paint, when the gel coat wouldn't stick on top of the ceramic coat on top of the right. paint, it was really it just, he usually has to scrub a little bit or buff it and just wipe right off. Yeah, <laughs> and, that, and the, the caution part of that is whenever you have any gel coat repaired, you just have to let your your uh, dealer know that it is ceramic coated, and then they can contact me and I'll help them figure out how to work around it. It's yeah. actually pretty easy. You just buff out the area with a heavy duty compound around the area that you're going to work with, and then you're you're fine to get your products to stick on it. Your, your, uh, Patch kit or whatever you're putting. Wrap it up. <laughs> so, so, okay, so if somebody's interested in ceramic coating, how should they uh, get a hold of you? Uh, best way is to go to our website and fill out the contact information, or they can email us at kevin.premiercustom at gmail.com. Perfect. And that is, oh, cool. Thank you, Kevin. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs>
If you enjoyed watching this video, click the screen to watch another.